In this video, we are looking at the property of closure. With the property of closure, it says if we take two real numbers and multiply them together, we get another real number. Because this is always true, we say that the real number are closed for multiplication. There is no way to escape the set of real numbers when multiplying real numbers. This is an example of the property of closure. It's not something we can write out with a number sentence like we can the other properties. Closure also means that when you combine any two elements of a set, the result is also in that set. So, for example, the real numbers are closed under addition and subtraction. They are not closed under the square root operation because the square root of negative 1 is not a real number. So when we square root a real number, sometimes our answer escapes the set. Just as a reminder, an operation works to change numbers. There are six operations in arithmetic that we can do with numbers. We can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We can raise something to a power, and we can also take a root. Those are the operations we'll be exploring with closure. Let me give you another quick example that's not on your sheet so that you can see some closure. Let's look at the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, numbers that you're very comfortable working with from the past. We want to ask, are the even numbers closed for addition? I have 2 plus 4 is 6. I have 10 plus 8 equals 18. No matter what two even numbers I take and add together, the answer is even. That will always be true. So are the evens closed for addition? Yes, they are. How about the odd numbers? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Are the odd numbers closed for addition? Well, let's think of a couple numbers. 1 plus 3. The answer is 4. So if I take and I add an odd number, plus another odd number. If they were closed, the answer has to be an odd number. But in our case, the answer is even. So what does that tell us? They are not closed. The odd numbers are not closed for addition because when I add two odd numbers, I get an even numbers. Just because the odd numbers aren't closed for addition doesn't mean they might not be closed for another operation. How about multiplication? Are the odd numbers closed for multiplication? Usually, I would start to think about a couple of examples. 1 times 3 is going to be 3. How about 5 times 7? 5 times 7 is going to be 35. Is the product of two odd numbers always odd? The answer to that question is yes, which means that the odd numbers are closed for multiplication. If we think about it, whenever we multiply two odd numbers together, all the factors are going to be odd, so we're going to wind up with another odd number. So we looked at evens and odds, but there are other sets that are not closed for certain operations. What we're supposed to do on this worksheet is to determine whether the following sets are closed over the given operations. If closure does not hold, we have to provide an example to show this and identify the set of numbers the result is in. So we're starting out for this A, the complex numbers with imaginary components. That means we have a number in the form A plus BI where A and B are both not equal to zero. So we have to have a complex number with imaginary components. Are these things closed for addition? Well, the answer is no, because if I take 5 plus 2i, and I add to that 5 minus 2i. When I put those two things together, I get 25 plus 0i's. My new number is a real number. It's no longer complex with an imaginary component. It doesn't have any imaginary component left. So this is real. I can also more specifically say that this is a natural number. It's also a whole number, an integer, a rational, all kinds of things. Okay, how about subtraction? Think of the example I just did and see if you can come up with a reason for why the complex numbers with imaginary components are not closed for subtraction. 
if I used the same two complex numbers I just had and I subtracted them and said, in this one, my real number part would be zero and my imaginary part would be plus four I. Um, in this one, I do have a complex number with an imaginary component. So let's see if I could come up with another way that I could make this not have the imaginary component. What if I started with five plus two I and I subtracted five plus 2i. Well, 5 plus 2i minus 5 plus 2i is 0, just straight up 0. So this is no longer an imaginary component. We are now real. More specifically, this is a whole number, 0. So that is an example of why the complex numbers with imaginary components are not closed for subtraction. How about multiplication? Can I take two complex numbers with imaginary components, multiply them together, and get something that does not have an imaginary component? Again, if I work with this same example of 5 plus 2i, if I multiply by 5 minus 2i, we remember this when I have two numbers with the same a and b, but different symbols in between, plus or minus. Those were called conjugates. And when I multiply my two conjugates together, the imaginary parts of this drop out, and I wind up with 27 as my product because all my imaginary parts are gone. So the answer here is a real number. 27 is also a natural number. So the answer, no, the complex numbers with imaginary components are also not closed. Try and think of examples for Part B and Part C, the pure imaginaries, while you pause the video and see what happens. The pure imaginary numbers are not closed for addition, subtraction, or multiplication. I gave an example for each of how we could have our pure imaginaries escape the set and return to the real numbers. Question C dealt with the integers. The integers are closed for addition because whenever I add two integers, my answer is always an integer. They're also closed for subtraction because whenever I subtract two integers, I wind up with an integer. They're closed for multiplication because when I multiply two integers, the answer is always an integer. But when I get down to square roots, the square roots are not closed for integers. Because if I take the square root of a negative integer, like the square root of negative 25, my answer will have an i in it. It will turn into a pure imaginary number. 